Welcome to CTV Sports and the third game of the World Pole League 2024 Palm Beach Open, where we have Senfest going up against Travieso. And coming to you today from the legendary field, number one at Grand Champions Paddock Club. There you see a very good view of the field, slightly overcast. A little bit of sun there as well. 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect conditions for this World Polo League game. And Yan, we have some amazing players ready to take the field. Let's take a look. Everybody here, CTV Sports, and as as uh, Yan was saying, the legendary field, field number one, Grand Champions Polo Club, and two very strong teams. Their first game here in the 2024 World Polo League Palm Beach Open, Senfest, and Travieso, and Yan. Well, today uh, we had the three brackets this time, and two brackets uh, with three player teams in each bracket. They play a cross bracket. And in the cross bracket, they'll rank the teams. And the two top teams will uh, go to the semifinals. The third bracket, four teams that play within their bracket. Top team will go to the semifinals. And then that's where it gets really interesting. And, and uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun to see where you take the second place, the third place, second place, third place team from the, the cross brackets and the second place team from the third uh Bracket three, where they play within, and they're going to play the, against each other to try to get that fourth spot for the semifinals where team number one will play against team number four and team number two can team number three, and we'll be uh, getting ready. The stage will be set after that for the finals. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, Dale, and I'm very excited uh, uh, about this tournament, which, of course, has a record 10 teams competing in it. That's a, a first as well. Um, and uh, when I look at the games that we've already had, as you said, this is the uh, third game. We've already had two very exciting games. Uh, defending champion Casablanca uh, did not do as well as expected against um, a pilot, who, of course, uh, making their debut, and we're great to have them on board. Um, Kai Apollo uh, taking on the Maltese Falcons. What a cracking game that we had yesterday. So, And all these games have been extremely close, uh, which just goes to show you and reflect how competitive at this very, very high level. Remember, th remember the highest level of polo played uh, anywhere in the world outside of Argentina. So I'm very much looking forward to this. And of course, uh, today we do have a double header. Uh, this afternoon, Aspen Valley will be taking on Audi. Uh, another thrilling match uh, to look forward to, and then of course the action continues next week. So no, I'm uh, I'm all uh, all go, and um, like I said, we've seen some great polo, and I'm pretty sure that these two teams, Sandfest and Travieso, will also not disappoint. Yeah, you guys. So Rob is going to play. We have the brothers Michelle, who they they mix it up. Rob will be playing, and they are a 22 goal team going up against Travieso, 26 goals. And so now four goals on handicap. Will yeah. they uh, they come out and kind of play uh, similar to the way Kaya did in their first two tournaments and really jump on that four goal handicap because two quick goals and then you're putting the pressure on. So we'll see how they decide to come out. It looks like Travieso is going to be in their white jerseys today. Yep, as you can see right there, Tony Kaye. And uh, yeah, we saw his dad, Deo Kaye. He um, he's playing for Aspen Valley. He's playing with the Aspen Valley crew, Pancho Benzon, Gandalita Perez, and Juan Martin Zubia. Very, very strong team. And they're in bracket. Uh, they're in the bracket three, also. And uh, so 
oh, we're gonna be have, we're gonna have a uh, a Kaye battle. Yep. In one of our games, which should be fun. They always like playing against each other, and a lot of a lot of uh, father son combinations, and uh, and brother sister combination. Brother sister combination. Great great job yesterday. Oh. Uh, Mia and uh, Proto playing very well together, and uh, but just a a strong uh, game across with the Maltese Falcons. You remember me coming out filming for Melissa Gandy, and they had Paquito de Navarre and then Alejandro and. Alejandro really gelled well with uh, with that team. We know uh, Paquito and Proto played together, but Mia was very yeah. very strong. They they played they just played very strong bowling. You know the uh, the Kaya team they they played bad. It was eleven and nine in the end. They they had two goals on handicap. You, like you said in our first one, Pilot came out very strong. Yeah, we are playing in different uh, places, so we, you, you'll see games here at the Grand Champion Pole Club Field One, Two, and Three for most of our high goal games. And uh, well, we played at the Pilot uh, Polo Farm. Yes. Also, we have the Santa Rita Polo Farm, and uh, we had a few games at the Valiente Polo Farm. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And actually, all those polo farms are right in the same area. All in the vicinity. No, like going back onto that game yesterday, it was an absolute pleasure. And also uh, the way that uh, Paquito, I mean, he already impressed uh, uh, no end last year, but the way he's come up uh, playing on five, five goals, goals yeah. 16 years of age. Look, like he's gotten a lot taller too. Yeah. 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 Father yeah. playing for the Audi team for a couple of years. And uh, so it looks like we have our two, uh, two of our top international umpires ready to go in the black and red jerseys today. And we'll get this first game underway. Away we go. It's just going to be picked up here and controlled by Pipe. Avecchilino gets a nice, nice long ball up the field. Oh, yeah, good pick up here by Kaye. Tony Kaye. He's got a bit of traffic. Magula Prida coming in straight away. Now, you were asking about how you think they're going to play this. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, Dale, if Traviesa are going to go out all guns blazing to try and get those four goals in as quickly as possible. Yeah, I, I would definitely... Use that, I think, Magula Prida, Facundo, Loza, and Pedro Falabella with Rob. I would think they want to try to capitalize on that, so they might come out with uh, some of their their top, top ponies. And remember, they can always rotate those ponies back in. But I would think they'd try to uh, capitalize on it. We'll see. First knock-in here for Seth Beth. It's going to be Pedro. He'll leave for Magoo. The Prida takes it around to the left-hand side. Yeah, look at that. Monster shot. Oh, yes. Perfect. A little bit short, maybe. Losa just has to correct. And look at that rotation working. Falabella right up to the front door. Yeah, slightly overhit that one. That would have been the first goal here. But uh, again, you can see they're not wasting any time, Dale. Yeah, well, that's Power Polo at its finest. And actually started with Pedro. And then the big ball by Loza, just bad luck there by Falabella, but I like the thought process. Here we go then, Travieso. And the 10 goal at that is Juan Martinero. Just uh, taking his time. And here is, as you know, one of my favorites, Tomacho Pierre is just holding fire. Now he gets a touch, his second. Tomacho working it, gets the support again from Nero, picks it up on the near side. Into the corner he goes. Losa straight on him. Nero just waiting a moment. Runs into a little bit of traffic. Yeah, and then he got the chance to take a shot. Must have deflected off someone. And it goes through. But that was, was that Nero? Yeah, it was Nero. He actually finds himself. Watch this. Yeah, he shuts it down here. And now they got to give him one play. And he knows it right here. So watch, he'll hit to the open space and then snap. And oh man, bad luck. It actually yes. doesn't go for Pipe. It actually goes off Bagoo. I was wondering where that ball, and also because our goal judge was right there, and the goal judge did not signal. So I figured something happened, but it actually went off Laprida. Bagoo looks like he's okay, but we'll give that ball a goal to Versalino. Here we go then, back to the halfway line. So on the ball again, there he is, the 10 goaler. Nero, Juan Martin Nero. Yeah, nicely done. Tomacho going up. I think he was looking for Tomacho, and yeah, he might just get lucky. Yeah, he did. Just uh, the ball just coming underneath the belly of the pony, finding the, the stick side of Tomacho. 
And uh, why not indeed try a long distance shot there from uh, Pipe Bicellino just out to the left hand side. So, Travieso, as I say, not wasting any time here. Yeah, Pipe dialed in already. He actually, that was, a, that was actually a nice shot. He could not hit it any further to the right based on where the defending players were lined up. So he hit that ball well. Uh, just off to the outside. Knock in coming. It'll be second knock in here in our first chucker, Falabella. And looking for Magoo. The Prida slams on the brakes. Yeah, has a man coming down the line. And uh, he's a bit surprised there, La Prida. Oh, Martin Nero coming down that line. Let's look at this again. Keep an eye out on the number four here at the bottom of your screen. There he is. He raises his stick right there. Yeah. And not enough, uh, comes off the board, but not enough to change the uh, right of way to a point. But we'll send him to the uh, courtesy change here. And you can see the flags right there here at the Grand Chain Poker Club. If you're new to the area, that is Lake Worth Road. And that is field five and four. Nice shot here at Pipe Versalino as he goes from horse to horse to change his pony. Now, remember, we are using the challenge system. Each team will receive one challenge. Per half, you got to use it or lose it. They can challenge any call, any ball placement. And uh, the uh, if you win your challenge, you'll receive another challenge. You'll keep receiving challenges until you are wrong. Um, and, of course, that is uh, the challenge is set up with the third man slash IRO, instant replay official, here in the CTV studios. Also, the IRO available for the umpires for the triggers. Check and see if a goal is in or out. Check and see if the ball goes over the end line or out of bounds based off coming off a pony or it could be a safety, a penalty six, which is similar to the uh, corner kick in soccer. And they hit from the 60 yard line. And of course, anytime you have any contact, could be the horses, could be the players. If they need to look at that, they can slow it down and check and see maybe which player uh, create a danger and then we have the unsportsmanlike conduct and of course the umpire trigger which is put in with our World Pole League umpires if the umpires are do you disagree then they'll use the IRO to help them decide which umpire has uh, made the right call or maybe both have not so we'll see and uh, here we go Quickly taken, the spot to hit there, 5A by Juan Martinero, and he sent it down the boards. Pipe Vecellino, let's look at this again, went for the shot, here it comes, the 5A, out to the left. Pipe Vecellino, just eyeing up that goal now, look at that. Doesn't even wait for the ball to stop, hammers that one into the, uh, well, within the, the danger zone. And uh, the player just in front there. And then when you get riding in from behind, it looked like Rob was, was, was trying to get up there to make his play. And Tony, guy came around. And remember, you're allowed to ride in from the side. He's going to be from the spot. It's only about 15 yards, maybe 12. Could be 10, even a little closer right there. Easy one here for Pipe. And he'll get his second goal of the day. First penalty on the open goal penalty, two riding in from behind. So, four goals to two, remember. Senfest getting those uh, four goals on handicap. They're 22 goals. And Travieso, as I th thought they would, start very early chipping away at that four goal advantage. Back to the halfway line they come. Ball is thrown in. And it's picked up on the near side. And uh, once again, Senfest have it, but uh, not very long because Tomacho Pierre is just getting the better of that uh, throw in. Sends it downfield. Oh, he might get another touch here. Well, he's going to be appealing against that. Umpire says, no, no, play on. Pipe Vecellina out of distance. And he will hammer that one through. But did we have a whistle on that play just before that shot? Yeah, let's see what happens here. It looked like Pipe was questioning. I think he, uh, maybe the goal judge thought it was in, but then Pipe thought it was wide. So they talked to the umpires. The umpires will talk to the goal judge, and they're going to come together. They are a three-man team out there, and they're going to say no no goal. So knock ain't coming, and Falabella. Pedro, long ball again. 
Ball just stays in play. Fecellino down. Oh, what a nice backhand. And look at this. Martinero. Yeah, you can see his mallet uh, seen better days. Went for the last touch. And that uh, well, was the straw that broke the camel's back on that mallet. Very unlucky there. Yeah, so that, that's going to uh, you know, dodge a bull there because with uh, Nero going forward, how do you break that? It came off the, backed up there by Pipe. And I guess it's on the first shot here. Yeah, right there. Yeah, look at that. And he's looking around like, what am I, what should he do? And then sometimes they break in different spots, the mouth. That one looked like it broke a little bit higher, and so it was a little bit loose. But uh, let's see, you get a penalty out of it. So that's going to bring out, so on the shot from Nero. So they had a little bit of an uneven ride off there. They, they came together when Nero hit the first ball. Yeah, he was trying to run by him, kind of get him a little bit there. And so on the breakaway, so another open goal penalty two. And Pepe again. Well, so far 100% for the young man from Chile. Making up the handicap. Yeah. Doing uh, just what Travieso would want to, uh, how to handle this. So let's see if, uh, again, if Sunfest can, can jump out here before they uh, they get the equalizer. Back to the center once again, we will switch directions after every goal scored. Well, you know, you and I like putting it out there, Dale. What do you reckon? You reckon they're going to get the equalizer with a little every minute left? I think Sunfest is going to get one here. They, they, they uh, want to get that offensive uh, attack going. You said they have, they've had a couple of uh, Nice uh, runs, just some bad luck. And here comes Magoo as he clicked down to a minute. Now then, Laprida. Yeah, good call. Sends it deep down. Field looking for, and he's found Falabella. He sends it again across the field. Now then, Rob Marshall tries to take the ball around. Cleared by Tomacho. And uh, here we go then. Travieso on the attack over on the far side Juan Martinero <sighs> slightly overrides but uh, there's always Tomacho Pieres keeps that ball inside the boards but only just little backhand nicely done by well there he is Pipe Vecellino sends it back again now did he cross that right of way would appear not umpire say play on or did they and he might have ran out of time there also, as you can see uh, right there. That's going to end our first chucker play. So, great first chucker here by the Travieso team. And a nice shot there of field one and field two with our grandstand stadium right there in the middle but between both fields. So, we'll send everybody off to get some fresh ponies. And we'll be back for our second chucker play at the 2024 World Poly Palm Beach Open. <laughs>
Dale Schwartz. I'm Jan Eric Frank. Great to have you with us. Yep. Sorry. And we're live. Grand Shade Polka, field number one, Yan. And uh, you want to go through the teams one more time, Yan? We just uh, started off here. Our first trucker, four four goals given to Senfest, but Travi Aso doing a great job uh, working it back here early. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's start with Travi Esso, uh, who uh, are 26 goals. Tony Kaye at uh, the number one position, playing our three goals, then to Macho Pierres. Uh, the sixth goaler who's uh, been so, so instrumental already in this first chucker. Pipe Vecilina picking up three goals, uh, two from the line of penalty, two penalty twos and one uh, goal, a shot on goal. And then, of course, Juan Martinera, the ten goaler. That is Travieso. And Senfest with uh, a total handicap of 22. They were given those four goals. Didn't score in the first chucker. Rob Michel at number one playing off uh, zero goals and then the... Uh, First of our two seven goalers, Facundo Losa at number two, Pedro Falabella at number four. They are the two seven goalers, and Magula Prida, the eight goaler, playing the number three position. So, uh, no score in that uh, first chucker. Senvested just holding on to that advantage of the four goals by one as we now rejoin uh, the two teams on field one here at Grand Champions Polo Club for the second of our six chuckers. The challenge system is in place. And remember, also, we have the buzzer beater in place. So if a ball is hit before the second horn and the ball continues, wherever that ball ends up, that will be the next play, uh, either through the goal or over the end line or if it stays on the field. And then remember the two-point conversion from center field as Bagula Prita is going to get a shot here, but just off the left. But any ball hit from behind the line. Not on the line, must be behind the line, from the center field, will be worth two goals. Juan Martinero gets things underway. And a nice ball there, the right through the middle there, picked up by Pipe Vecellino, and he's got, uh, well, a clear run straight down the middle of the field here. Still Vecellino. Now the long shot up to the front door. He was looking for Tomacho Pierre. It's going to be intercepted by Laprida. Tomacho, yeah, that's what he does. He'll stick with you once he gets his teeth into you. It's very hard to shake him. A little bit of entanglement there. Okay, I thought maybe Pipe was going to put that ball in from a good 130. Again, hitting the ball very well, as always. But he drops it down. And then good D by the Senfest team to shut it down. They turn that one around, and we get a whistle on the play. So penalty 5A, Valabella. Lock it in. Yeah. Kaye coming in for the challenge. He's going to leave that one behind. Nicely done. Set play here over to the boards. Yeah, things starting to work a little bit better now as uh, Facundo Losa. He will once again leave it for Falabella. Kaye coming in very early for the challenge. Must allow that play again out to the left hand side. Nobody looking after the number three, Laprida. Well, you could definitely see that they've been practicing this kind of a play here. In he comes. Nero on him. The two fours battling it out again. Losa. Losa with a shot and attempted under the neck. Everybody having a go now. And yeah, you have two players converging there on each other. Let's see what the umpires made of that. You get the replay. It goes to the inside, controlled by Loza. Good D here. Look how everybody staggered in there on the Traviaso team. Ball goes underneath and now does right there, does. Yeah. Nero stay on his side or not. You'd have to look down the pike to actually see that play to see where Juan Mars pony was. So we'll see what they decide to call as they came together there. But that's where positioning is huge. So uh, with 5.30 on the clock, four to three. Let's see what they decide to come up with here. Like I said, another good D. I love how they uh, Stagger, another way to watch. We've been talking about. Okay, so they did trigger to see where the horse was. Is uh, Wanmar met that ball, kind of on the angle, little angle. 
So just to make sure where his horse was, so they used the trigger there and they decide that his horse was over the right of way. And so open goal penalty two in favor of Zenfest and Loza will get his first goal of the day. Yeah, and an important goal as well. Uh, after they didn't score in the first chucker, so um, this will surely motivate the team in blue. Restoring at least half of that advantage. They were given at the beginning of five goals to three. Yes, you know, hey, you know, they're staggered. You get the one player who gets the man, and then Trevier, so they kind of stagger the players, so they cover the whole goal, which uh, was kind of cool to see from um, just how they go about it, because we've seen such great defense by so many teams here in, in the World Pole League inside the 60 yard line, lying underneath that one of the uh, top who's going to be playing here in the finals of the Founders Cup on Sunday. Uh, but it's great to kind of see how they how they set things up. Look at this. Got to be picked up here, taken in by Wanmar. See, look at Wanmar just controlling the play. Now he leaves it for Pipe off the pony. Loza. Still no whistle, and away we go, and they're going to let them run. Here we go. Sandfest, yeah, picking up the pieces there on their own doorstep. On the move, Losa. Yeah. Checks. Oh, nicely done. Leaves it for Falabella. Falabella slightly overcooked that one. And uh, Tomacho Pierres coming back in defense. Here he is. Losa with him. The two number twos battling it out. And the ball is back where uh, Trevieso want it, deep in the half here of Senfest. Yeah, Tomacho Pierre is appealing. And uh, his appeal might be heard there, just slightly in front there. Let's have another look. So Tomacho throws it down. Magoo's going to let him go there. Does not make the play. And then they come together and have a inchy plays. He hits that ball across. We'll see how they decide on this one. As you remember, we talk about those different line changes. And um, they're going to use the courtesy change here also. And I actually had the opportunity to sit in one of the umpire meeting with the umpires. And they talk a lot about how the ball on the field can, you know, sometimes it looks like it's going one direction uh, when it's hit. And they can change direction, hit a divot. It could just spin on the grass. Like you said, the English, we call the spin. You know, it could change. You and I were talking about that. And but on the field, it could look completely different. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and then when you get when you get the high cam or in the middle or you get the end zone cam looking at it or the drone footage, you know, it can look uh, different also. So that's where they'll uh, they can take a look at those and just, just make sure one player um, especially with this in, in this league, such a high rated league at twenty six goals. Uh, these players when you see a player dropping on one, and you might not think it's on the line, but you drop it on it with a complete confidence and going to the ball full speed, thinking, whoa, wait a minute, is maybe 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 some you know, maybe someone wrong or so. We'll see. They're gonna talk this one out. Check it out. 343 on the clock. And uh good shot there of Nero and Gaye. They come back. And uh all right, three here. Good start here uh, in the second chucker by Senfes. Absolutely. Yeah, a little, little slow start in the, in the first chucker, but now they came right back. Yep, they've uh, managed to somehow contain uh, Travieso. Uh, a lot of work goes into that, of course. And as you keep saying, Dale, and that, of course, is very important here. The defense needs to be uh, uh, dialed in. All right, so uh, they, so they had a challenge. You know, we saw. Now there was a foul called, mm -hmm. and the set for C challenged it, right? And they won their challenge. Yeah, so we'll get a bone here. Remember, how you see that ball yeah, kind yeah, of changed yeah, a little yeah. bit. And Loza jumped on it. Yeah. And that's one of those plays where here, for, um, Pierre's hit it from the side, but it kind of hits the ground and spins a little bit, going towards the goal, and that's why Loza jumped on that. So a uh, strong challenge here by the Senfest team. And uh, so they go to the bowling. And that 
ball will go out of bounds. So, yeah, thank you, Dale. Good explanation. And uh, that's, again, as you said, a game of inches. And sometimes that line change is so, so... Yeah, we could kind of see a yeah. little bit of ours. You know, we, we got one look at it. But, of course, remember, the IRO has the ability to slow it down. Three speeds, uh, frame by frame, and different angles. So, uh, just to check. But uh, well done by the Scentfest team. Uh, very, uh, very strong challenge. Look at this ball here by first team. It's going to go deep down. Picked up and cleared. Nero left it behind. In comes Falabella. And another man charging down the line. But uh, once again, as long as the umpires see there's no imminent danger, they will do everything to uh, encourage positive play. Oh, good pick up here by Kaye. Cleared under the neck and in front of his own goal mouth there by Laprida. Out to the boards with Falabella. We'll pick it up. Still, the number four leaves it. Senfest on the break. Going up to the front door, and that is a ball nicely done for play for Rob Marshall. Good first touch from Rob. And his second touch also very, very solid. Vicellino coming in for the challenge. It's cleared. Calle. Now to play role of the defender, Laprida, tucks in behind, Losa, there he is, he's on the ball now, <clears throat> Kaya just not getting his stick down quick enough, still Losa, good shoot, and does, and uh, it was deflected, and now Tomacho Pierres, look at him, trying to chase his own ball, Losa once again picks up that broken pass, and on the near side, not quite the pickup he wanted there by Tony Kaye. Turned around. Here we go. Falabella looking for Laprida in front of goal. Losa. Ooh. And Machal just not getting that touch, which would have put the ball through. Very quickly turned around now. And Travieso with Pipe Vecellino. Vecellino fumbles that one. Losa. Fakes the backhand, Tomacho right on him. There is the backhand out to the boards and it's picked up nicely by Falabella. Great, great series of plays yeah. there. Back and forth, offense and defense and they're still going since they, uh, they changed ponies here. Backed up there by Tony. He doesn't get the, the complete hit on the ball. Kind of pops it up in the air and Loza who we'll gets the finish here. Watch, Tony gets a position here well. Falabella in between two players. Drops the ball to Magoo. Magoo on the give and go. He's already got Loza going forward. Tony in a good spot here. Just kind of gets underneath a little bit, pops it up in the air. And then Facundo. Yeah, unlucky. Yeah, unlucky there. Gets the finish, gets second, second goal. Now so it's gonna end our second chucker play. So we'll get everybody on some fresh ponies. Stay with us. We'll be right back for our third chucker. Playing in a dedicated women's polo league is great for progressing your polo. It's um, great for us to play together as women, to have a chance to take to the field with some of the best polo players in the world. Um, it's helping us come together, improve our polo and keep up playing a regular high level of polo. Like I'm learning so much. I am uh, shadowing some of the best women players um, in the sport and it's just been an incredible journey really.
I have played at Santa Rita before and I love it here. It's a fantastic club. They do so much for, for not only just polo, but women's polo. So we're very excited to be here and you know, huge thanks to Melissa and Mark for, for having us. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here at CTV Sports, Palm Beach Open, the third match. Senfest in the blue shirts against Travieso. And I'm alongside the wonderful Dale Joseph Schwitz. Dale, how are we this morning? Yeah, good, good, good. Good start. We have a doubleheader for you today. And uh, I always love that. So we have Aspen Valley with Teo Cae, uh, Pancho Benzedon, Candelito Perez, and Juan Martin Zubia. I like that one with Teo. Different look there. And Audi, Mark Anzi, Heta, Casanola, Pablo McDonough. And... Uh, so that should be a... And Segundo Sar uh, Saravi. Oh, yeah. Segundo. I'm, far, I'm sorry about it. Segundo. He was in here. He was in the CTV Sports. Uh, he was in the CTV Sports studios this morning. And we got to see uh, me, Segundo. It's always good seeing the players uh, up close and personal off the field. Indeed. And when they're not with their Casablanca helmets on when they're in here. And uh, so that's cool. But, uh, yeah. We got, well, first trucker owned by Travieso. Yes. And I think the second checker, you could say, pretty much owned by Senfest. Absolutely. Uh, very uh, clean, clean uh, first half here. Both teams, and um, I'm just looking for one of the, one of them to blow up and really, uh, really say rock and roll. Because as we were talking between Chucker, great passing, yes. and both teams keeping each other, trying to keep each other off the line. As a great, great penalty shooters on both teams. On the knock in is going to be Nero. One, Martin Nero, one of our seven, ten goalers in this uh, tournament. Uh, which we are, of course, uh, thrilled about. Vecellino trying to send that one up to uh, Tony Calle. Turned around by the number four in blue, Petro Falabella. He will leave it for Laprida. Back to Falabella. All down to uh, down the boards, and he's uh, he was looking for Losa there, looking for Facundo Losa, but the uh, as you call him, a secretary of defence, Juan Martinero, saw it coming, picks it up deep in his own half, and you can see that uh, Senfist are pressing a lot more now, coming in a lot earlier now for the challenge, uh, and uh, yeah, you see that uh, that will pay dividend. Losa, beg your pardon, yes, it was Losa looking for the number three, La Prida. But uh, that's why he is 10 goals. Not going to be a walk in the park to get around him. Fakes the backhander, creates a bit of space for himself now then. Juan Martinero on the move. Trying to feed that one up to Calle. Sent back by uh, Falabella. Picked up now by Losa. Losa with a nice drive into that danger zone. Pipe Vecellino will uh, chase it and be the first man at it. Puts it out towards the corner. I'm liking this power play here, Dale, by Senfes, keeping uh, Travieso very much in their own half. Possibly a chance here for Pipe Vecellino to get that ball over the halfway line. Ball goes out of bounds, so we will have another change of possession. Yeah, I agree with you. The Senfes team, they are definitely pressing quickly if, when they if they lose the ball. And uh, we were talking about the Travieso defense inside the 60 but the minute they get the ball, you can see since the second, the second and then the third trucker, they are going right to the man trying to win that ball back. Uh, top on the pitch, Balabella. Yeah, he will leave it. Turned around for Laprida. Laprida might have a crack at this. Uh, kind of little deflection. Calle, nicely done. And uh, out maneuvered. Look at this. A great run here now for that uh, Tangola. Juan Martinero on the approach. The cut shot coming. There it is. Wow, and that Bay Pony can run, run, run. Boy, she is quick. And Juan Mauer, when he gets out in front here, watch. He gets a lot out of his pony. Magoo liked the little Bay, too. He actually gets there, but uh, that's when Juan Mauer pulls the trigger. And uh, two exceptional ponies there. And uh, back to San Diego, Juan Mauer might, 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 sw might switch one up there quicker. Quickly there, so right after goal, but they're gonna go to the courtesy change anyways. But maybe he was like said, I get one run, I go to another and, and use it up. They're gonna use the courtesy change here, 405, 
And uh, good, that'll get your your uh, energy going as they had uh, two unanswered goals, Senfest in the second chucker. So Travieso and Walmart's first goal today. And I'm sure that won't be the last that we'll see of him. That's a little view here of uh, Tomacho Pieris. Flying horse change. Working very, very hard as he always does. Yeah, big part of the, the uh, what count you'll see on Sunday with the Lion Ernita team going up against Park Place. Congratulations, both teams make it to the final of the Founders Cup as you were talking about yesterday. We just, they, they decided to move the game to Sunday based on just the weather, but it's going to be uh, going to be good because the teams have actually had a, a pretty good rest and, you know, we'll see if that helps or hurts in certain ways, how they prepare for the game as they have about a week between and uh, both teams were uh, ready to go. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun game. Of course, you can come to come to the stadium where Yan will be live. Yan and Frank out at the field, and uh, it's always a lot of fun out there if you want to watch a game live. And also, you can watch a game on the monitors out there, as we will have it uh, live on CTV Sports. And I'll be in the studios with one of our special guests, and we've been having special guests every Sunday. And I want to thank all of our guests that we've had. We had Freddie Mannix, Alejandro Nuiz Estrada, and Sugar Erskine. So far, you were with Sugar, I was with Alejandro and Freddie. I want to thank everybody. They uh, a lot of fun. It's our special guest, so you can tune in. A little different broadcast. Always nice to have the pro players. So here we go. Players back out on the field. Fresh ponies. 4.05 on the clock. Six goals to four. And it's picked up by Pippi Vecchiolino. Vecchiolino just... Uh, Giving it a moment or two. In comes Losa for the challenge. There is uh, Tomacho, and he knew, he saw that uh, Juan Martinero was on his own avo over on the left-hand side. But they read it well with the number three, Laprida. Nero with a, not quite a powerful backhand as he was hoping for. Falabella sends it back down, and now this could be a nice pickup here by Facundo Losa. Nice pony, he's on two. Losa corrects himself, and uh, there is his third goal. Yeah, you're gonna get a hat trick here, Facundo. And again, give and go, as uh, Estrada was saying, Alejandro, when he was in the, as our special guest, uh, you're seeing a lot of back shots used, especially here in this 26 goal polo, as that ball moves faster than the pony. And uh, once they get it, they have it dialed in. I mean, these the players are moving before the ball gets hit. And right there, Loza had a good 10 lengths on everybody. And nice run on the Bay Pony. Turned inside and controlled by Wanmar. Now then, who's he going to be looking at to play that ball to? Under the next shot. Uh, Pipe is there, but so is Loza. Echelino. Uh, nicely done. Leaves it behind. Falabella. Here is Tomacho. Powerful backhand, a little bit too far there for, or maybe not, for Kaye after that miss hit by Falabella. Kaye, well, he can hit a ball too, and look at that. Yeah, should have maybe taken that fraction of a time longer to tee it up because uh, very strong, uh, Tony Kaye. Yeah, just off the left side, but good, good contact. And we said Tony playing very, very well in, his, uh, in the Founders' Cup. So he should be all ready to go. His father played, Teo played the first, the All-Star Challenge, and then Tony played the Founders. Now they're both playing here in the Palm Beach Open. Knocking coming from uh, Falabella, looking for Facundo, but stolen away by Tamacho. Uh, Tamacho has the space. It's being made for him by Pipe Vecellino there, so he can turn that pony around. He does a good job. Oh, Kaye. Great eye for the ball, and again, second time, super reaction there by the the number one in white. Three goals, of course. Yeah, and, and then, of course, Senfest coming in very quickly, and we have a whistle. Keep an eye on Tony, number one, and but look behind him. Watch, for, he's going to go forward. Wanmar's going to go forward right here. He takes the man, now he's going to go forward. Now keep an eye on Pepe right there. See how he gets caught in between two players? Yeah. And looked like Facundo and Rob 
Uh, got Pipe caught in the middle there for a uh, Versalino sandwich. And so that will give an opportunity here with 1.17 left in our first half to uh, probably an open goal here. We'll see. It might, could be back. We'll see now. Both teams, remember, both teams still have challenges here. Actually, uh, the Senfest team did challenge a right-of-way violation in the second chucker, and they were successful. They won the challenge. So, uh, but look at the open goal here. And that'll put Pipe for the 30-yard, or the 40-yard, I'm sorry, penalty three. And Pipe, no problem. This is a smooth operator from the penalty line. Three for three again. His fourth goal of the match. So, Travieso shutting down that little gap. I like to go hit penalties with him. <clears throat> I'm get a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> and ask him for a lesson. <clears throat> he would his, uh, because he hit so well. All right, here we go. Two goal difference and one minute left. Let's see if uh, Sefes can, uh, and get one more here and try to keep it right around that handicap, Bella Bella. Yeah, snap from that to the left-hand side. That's a great pass for Laprida. Laprida. Oh, oh, the post, and it just goes wide. Unlucky, very, very unlucky. Great passing, though. Just great pass. I'll tell you what, they, this is going to be a great second half. When these teams go into the, it's going to end it here. This is going to be a great second half. If you don't want to miss the second half, these two teams are going to go and talk about it. The passing has been phenomenal by both teams. So let's get them all organized. Let's check out our stats, stats here. They're going to be pretty good across the board. Travier, so get a few more shots. Makes sense because they've had some more knock-ins. The uh, Senfest team knocked in a few more times, but very, very clean polo. Look at that one foul by Travio. So that's great. That's great. So we'll get them all organized for our second half. We'll take a little break. And uh, Yana yeah, will be back for our second half of the 2024 World Pole League Palm Beach Open. My name is Nacho Estrada. 
I'm from Argentina, eight goals. Hilario Figueras, uh, five goals from Argentina. My name is Martin Jauregui. I'm my handicap is six goals. I'm from Argentina. Silvestre Navillo, and I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Tomás Pérez from Argentina, and I'm six goals. Francisco Spinacci, and I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Juan Bolini, and I'm a three goal polo player right now, but it could be eight. And, uh, I'm from Argentina. Ah, no, actually, now I'm American. No, here is a, it's amazing. The view, the, the fields, everything is uh, super nice. Question is what I don't like about Spain. I think I like everything about Spain. Uh, the weather, the field. Right now in the summer, I would say the best club in the world. Friendship, the, the people, the, the scenery, everything. Eh? This is my seventh year coming in a row and I feel like I'm at home right now. So me and the family go around like, like we know the place for a long time and, and we enjoy the summer a lot. When I come here uh, winter and summer, I actually like Aspen more in summer. There's more stuff to do. All the mountains around here, like it's a pretty nice place and it is nice to play because they are very good horses and I play with a lot of friends. No, I like the polo, the horses and the people. I like to do mountain biking and to go to the lake. Yes, going to the lake, uh, stay here in the barn, everything. It looks amazing, it's my first time here, but uh, all the, the, the things they, they're doing today is, is amazing, so I'm gonna be uh, Enjoy, and I appreciate you to, to inviting me to be here in the, in the season. Christmas in July, uh, kids, are, kids are always looking forward for it. The day they come to Aspen, they know, they, they relate it with Christmas in July. It's an extra that they have here. I like Christmas in July because we like get all together and we receive a lot of presents.
you. Welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. I'm Jan Eric Frank. And there's a nice shot there. Uh, Rob Rochelle, as he's uh, going through his horse list for the second half. And uh, Jan, you want to uh, want to go through the teams here? Yeah. As we have uh, two very good teams with Sunfest and Travieso uh, at the moment. Seven for uh, Sunfest, five for Travieso. Well, Sunfest got off to a bit of a shaky start, but... Um, they turn things around, especially in Chucker 2 and 3. Rob Machal, there's the man we were just talking of uh, uh, at the number one. They're in blue, of course. Facundo Losa at number two of the seven, seven goaler. Makula Breida, he's the eight goaler at number three. And Pedro Falabella, the other seven goaler at number four. Facundo Losa picking up all the three goals thus far here for Senfest. Travieso, they're in white. Uh, well, there you have a very good picture of uh, the four players here. And uh, as I said, Travieso, they are today in the white shirts. You've got uh, Tony Kaya there at number one. Then Tomacho Pierre is at number two. Pipe Vecellino, the man from Chile, he's picked up four goals so far. And, of course, Juan Martinero, the Tangola, picking up a goal in the third chucker. And as Dale was saying, at the halftime interval, they left the field. Senfest leading by seven goals to five. Now, remember, they did get four goals on handicap. And uh, Travieso did a very good job of chipping away at that four goals in the first chucka. But uh, Senfest found themselves and came, very, came back very strong in chucka two and three. As uh, we now are about to start chucka four with that two goal advantage still for Senfest. But I'm pretty sure, and as Dale was saying, we will see uh, a more of that... Uh, Top shelf, top draw kind of passing. Absolutely uh, amazing the way both two, uh, both of these teams have been playing. And uh, I'm pretty sure that Travieso will do everything they can to uh, chip away further at that advantage. Here we go then with the Tangola Juan Martinero to get chucker number four underway. Nice long ball for Calle. One touch polo. That's what I like. And it's going to go around the outside for Tomacho Pieris. Perfectly. Three shots. If that goes through, Dale, three shots from goal to goal. Coast to coast like butter on toast. And that's about as good as it gets right there. That's money on the first. First, uh, Nero does not waste any time. And I love that he finds Tony. And Tony finds the gap. In between, even though he hits it to the left, you'd say, why would he hit it to the left when he's got his player to the right? Hitting the ball into the gap and letting Tomasha win the ride off. And uh, just a uh, sensational finish there by Tomacho Pieta. Great way to start off the second half. And look at this, Juan Martin. Yeah, he was uh, working that rotation. Yeah, luckily for uh, Senfest, player there got in between. Tomacho... And start to the boards, back to Juan Martinero. Bicholina blocking a little bit to keep, uh, or to allow Juan Martin to make the shot. Here we go, the daisy cutter. And uh, very, very close, just out on the right-hand side of that goalpost. So, Travieso clearly with a mission here in chucking number four. Yeah, they've, uh, they've come out pumped up, and that's what they want to do. Try to get, it, get, get this uh, Sanford's team early. And uh, because they have, they've gotten stronger and stronger here. I thought you might see the same here. We'll see now that Senfest has control. On the uh, first time we've seen this, a bit of the uh, leapfrog, where Falabella brings it in, leaves it for Loza. Loza gives it back to Pedro. And Falabella now trying a similar sort of play, but on the left-hand side, looking for Laprida. Pierrez. Turning very quickly. There you are again, the two twos working together. Losa and uh, Pierres. Need to allow to make a play. Yeah, a little bit of a miscommunication. And uh, Tomacho Pierres will jump on that straight away. Not much a Falabella can do. Pierre is on the near side. And Pierres puts it through. Yeah, some, uh, another nice goal here by Tomacho. Gets out in front. And look at this chest on there. She is... Very, very fast also. Great approach. Holds it on the near side. Back to the offside. You letting the ball work itself through there when he gets in the red zone. And uh, Tomacho scoring two terrific goals here on the little chestnut. 
She, uh, not that she's very strong on the ride off with Magoo on the first one, she was very quick getting out in front of everybody out of the bowling. Well, that, uh, a very good example there why he is one of my favorite six goal players. And uh, this young man also, look at him go. Kaye, responsible for that uh, previous goal that uh, Tomacho scored. Tries to take it down. Wanted to finish it himself. Yeah, a little bit unlucky there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's fired up on himself, but that's what he'll do. He'll get it going. Tony Yippie Kaye, I told you, he'll get fired up. And then he's been playing, playing well, so he uh, he'll uh, he'll get those in there, lay up, lay that lay that uh, approach in there. He would like to, to add that uh, the third quick goal as uh, equalized here at seven. Magoo using the field, looking for Loza. Yeah, a lot of space there on that left side, Richelino. Sends it back, nicely done again, perfectly timed, and it's picked up by, well, not quite by Tomacho Pierres, but the idea was absolutely, again, 10, 10 goals. Nero, deflection, little backhand chip there to uh, Laprida. Very, very clean still this game. Losa, nice long ball, looking for Marshall. Becciolino out to the boards, and he felt it coming, and he turned. And now then, Juan Martinero along the boards. Yeah, look at this, plenty of space. He's got Tomacho on the left. Yeah, he tried to send that ball over to Tomacho. A little bit of a miss hit. Here comes the second attempt, and there he is, Tomacho Pierres. Mm, yeah, nice attempt. The guy, the ball was going to go on its own. But again, Pedro, Falabella, good defense there, keeping Tamacho outside of the post, not allowing him to win the ride off and push him inside since he, he would have had an opportunity to help that ball along a little bit. Walmar hit that ball uh, a little bit closer to the near post than he wanted, but uh, good D. So yep. seven to seven here, we switch him up there in our courtesy change in the fourth chucker. This afternoon, Aspen Valley, yes. Audi, what do you think? Uh, it'll be new combinations. New combinations. With, with Benzedon, Pierre's, and Zubia. You don't have Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, Casanola and McDonough with Mark, well, they're coming off their 2023 Argentine Open win with Nana Tividad, so... Uh, Heta and, and Pablo should be in sync. Yeah, and I've got a funny feeling that Audi uh, wants to prove a point this afternoon. You think so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think, uh, make sure you don't tune in for that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to all the different games that we've had. Because uh, Audi narrowly missed making it through to the final. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, knowing Mark the way I know him, uh, he will be very hungry to... Uh, yeah, to send a signal to all the other nine teams yeah uh, you know he wants to make sure i'm pretty sure he wants to make sure that audi is a contender and they are i mean with two ten goalers uh dale you know yeah you know they, they got it and that's bracket three remember they're going to play within their bracket the four teams with senfest playing here right now santa travieso aston valley audi in uh bracket one and two the cross bracket pilot's going to play across they played casa first and they'll play alegria and the maltese falcons and um we had gaia polo they played against the maltese falcons in their first and then they'll switch it up they'll play across park place um they're going to play uh, well they'll play in their final first and then they'll continue with andre uh, joaquin panello on britos de la they're changing it up a little bit also. So it'll be fun to park place, seeing them here in World Pole League. All right, everyone back from the courtesy change. Controlled. Kind of a sword fight going on here. Five or six players. Controlled. I love this great pony of Magoo's. Yeah, and that's a nice ball up through the middle there. And he's found Falabella. Oh, a miss hit, unfortunately, for the number four there. And Kaye not wasting any time, turning the ball around again. Look at that, out of the air. Great play here by the three goal up. 
Un unfortunately, or unable to there to, to control it. Los up, Marshall, nicely done, and all of a sudden, Senfest on the move towards that Trevieso goal. Rob, he's again, again, we were talking about Rob, Rob positioning the last time he plays. He gets in those spots, and he he's always in the right spot, either in front or in back. And he and, they, and he work, he's working the four uh, player rotation today, very well here for Senfest. Uh, ball just going over the back line. Well, Martinero, I wonder what's going through his mind. I'm yeah, sure. He's set play here. Yeah. I'm trying to get a set play. Well, they've done well their set plays. Came out, went coast to coast, Jan, on their first run. Yeah. So, and he's, uh, looks like he might be going forward here, though. Keep an eye on him going on the center here, Pipe. Echelino. Now then, where's he going to play this next ball there? You see one more going up. Out to uh, Kony Kaye. Again, a clever play there. Clever pass. Pierres can't pick it up. Nero with the backhand. Now Pierres might get onto this one. Yeah, he does. Needs to take around the outside. Tomacho. And again, he makes it look so easy. Yeah, beautiful goal here. Tomacho dialed in as he is usually the worker bee and i like this he actually went to that ball and he was thinking goal 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 right from the giddy up and no pun intended but he ran the corner there he came out of that turn quicker than he went into it and that's a great way to end the chucker so we'll get him ready for the fit chucker and a good shot there of captain uh, juan martin nero giving uh, tony guy a few words and talking strategy stay with us we'll be right back When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players fieldside and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything goes on or near a horse, you're lucky to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players. Here we go, live from the Grand Chain Pole Club, field number one. The Tony Calle and the Travieso team coming out and, uh, well, down by two goals at halftime, but a uh, brilliant Ford Chucker, the Macho Pieres, uh, picking up three goals right from the start. And that was just a power pole play. And then a nice... Uh, Control play on the little chestnut mare, actually out of the bowling, and then after the cursey change, a yeah, nice play and showing you different dimensions of all kinds of different stuff there. So uh, well done, Tomacho, making it uh, eight to seven right now, and there's another good shot of Juan Mar. Yeah, I'm still uh, deliberating which of those three goals is my favorite. I think I'm going to have to go with the first one. That was... Uh, oh, Tomachos? Yeah. You like that power? Yeah, I like the power play, too. Um, yeah, I, I, get it. I agree with you on that. Just also, I mean, a great great play pass from, from uh, Nero, and then also... Uh, Kaye. K 
Kaye, Tony, yeah, not me not messing around with the ball, hit and run, just uh, showing you how quickly you can travel that 300 yards yeah. from coast to coast. You remember the polo field, 300 by 160 yards wide. And uh, you see, we have a lot of fans out here coming out today and uh, watching the game on the sideline. Beautiful day here on a Saturday. And uh, you are um, welcome to come to the games and tailgate. And um, our Sunday games, we only have one side. You know, to go on both sides. But on some of the other games, on some of the other fields, um, and uh, we have all the security there that will they'll line you up if you have any questions. So let's get back to the action. Here we go. Very tight game. Both teams looking for their first win here in the Palm Beach Open. And Tavancha Pierre is there sending that ball up to uh, Juan Martin Nero. Didn't quite get to it. Senfest, as you were just saying, Dale, for the first time now trailing by one goal. And they will do everything in their power to get the equalizer. Over on the far side, Facundo Losa runs into some traffic with Pippi Vecellino. There's the backhand down the boards. Calle won't get there quick enough. And we have a whistle. Well, what happened there? And let's see. Ball gets backed up by Pipe. There. And in and out. So. See what the umpires decided is because you have a lot, oh. a lot of different movement. Yeah, you know, was was Tony on the right of way? Was Facundo on the right of way? Um, it was it was interesting because it looked like at first Tony was going that way, Facundo was, and Facundo kind of checked, mm -hmm. and then Tony pulled out, and Facundo went back in. Uh, let them see what they decide on this. Uh, uh, Okay, we do have a timeout a, uh, at the moment for one of the players. So we'll let them, uh, let them talk about that and we'll also uh, make sure that uh, all the players are, are okay. Remember the uh, Grand Chevy Polo Club? We've been watching a lot of sick goal polo also, Yan, six and eight and 12. And um, polo school is is open and, and uh, working. So if you are looking to play, go to the director of contact or director of operations, Juan Bolini. And Juan actually also playing in the sixth, eight. And um, also you can get in touch with our general manager, Cale Newman. And Cale's at most of the games along with Juan. So if you're, uh, if you're at some of the games and you want to talk to them about the, the, uh, the different uh, leagues, because we do have our women's league also every Tuesday. If you're looking to, uh, or every Wednesday, I apologize. Every Tuesday, we have, and you said it was a lot of fun. Mm. The sunset uh, truckers and cocktail. Indeed, right? yeah. There was a special cocktail. Well, I don't drink. You don't drink, yeah. So, don't but you so. didn't check and see if they had it. Which one they had? You used to have a special one. Yeah. I know you have like a you know special oh, yeah week. weekly every yeah. week every week different one. But then they have some very nice non-alcoholic cocktails, yeah. like juices. You non -alcoholic. know, non-alcoholic. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, and they have uh, amazing, like you said, hors d'oeuvres. Okay, so it looks like they are going to get a right-of-way violation. Blocking would be the call from the spot. And they pass that stick back to Facundo Loza, who they mix it up a little between Magoo and Pedro, but it's going to be controlled by Juan Mar. Nero. Just wanted to shake off or get around the outside of Magula Prida. <clears throat> Does very well, sends it across the field, looking for, and he's found Macho Pierez. He's going to have to deal with uh, Falabella. Pierez some hammers another ball down the boards for Tony Calle. Sent back into the run now of Facundo Losa. Nicely done, and they do that so well, Senfest. That combination play, and I'm sure that's something which they must practice a lot because they do the switcheroo, they do the fake reverse, and uh, get that ball back down into uh, Travieso's half of the field. Nicely done by Losa Facundo. Uh, and 
and uh, that will just go out on the left hand side so again Sanfes putting the pressure on I like this yeah I, I agree with your pad the passing uh, Loza on the uh, the bay the bald face mayor but you know when you're trying to get around Nero not an easy job nope. <laughs> so you read that perfectly but that, that it looked like it looked like Facundo was going to go for it and try to scoot by him and uh, the timing was perfect they've been they've been passing the ball very very well between Rob and and uh, Pedro Magoo and Facundo but like you said when you're uh, when you got to get around Nero it, it is not an easy job and because he is top 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 and he just reads the game so well he actually cut the he he saw Lowe's are going to try to make the run so he he got the chest on mayor jumping out but then the minute that he gets the chest on mayor jumping out to, to block to block Lowe's are from running then he's already anticipating Lowe's are shutting down yeah. so he shuts yeah. it down yeah well said well said <laughs> yeah and then yeah he's fun to watch man he's a cool guy he's, and uh well congratulations also to uh to Walmart being in the finals of the Argentine Open this year with the Lotto Fina uh, Saudi team with Adolfo, David Sterling. Mixed it up uh, very well. Proto. Very strong, strong team. Great final this year. But uh, Natividad coming out with the win. I think Lolo also here, you know, Lolo helping. I think Lolo will probably be helping. He was coaching. Uh, the Audi team. I'm sure he'll uh, I'll see if he will have to, we'll have to check with our field site correspondent to see if Lolo is uh, also going to be coaching the Palm Beach Open as he was coaching the All Star Challenge and yes, the Town Cup. Yeah. And always great having the Hall of Famer. Yep. He loves doing the coaching also. He actually co coaches during the Open. He likes to have extra extra eyes there, which always helps. Okay, Tony Calle on the knocking after Juan Mar. Turned around in control by Senfed. They got Obagu going forward here. And he's got him. Yeah, he does. Low selling a nice pass to Laprida. Laprida, yeah, he was looking for Falabella there. The ball just not getting enough power on that shot. Nero. Back out towards the boards. Yeah, he was looking for uh, Tomacho Pieris, but it's intercepted by Losa. Losa around the outside, trying a very difficult shot under the neck on the near side. And it's probably one of the most difficult shots in polo as it all comes to a halt. Well, Tony Kay is going to jump on this right away. Now, did he get blocked or did he not? And uh, we'll be able to take a look. Keep the ball going, go out 45 degrees. Then it hits a quick line change there. And then right yeah. there yeah. you have contact. Yeah. So, you know, work the contact out. Was the blocking? Was the contact the opposite way? Uh, if you could you also see that ball was actually going at a 45 degree angle. And then Tamacho got to hit that, hit the ball a little bit changed the right away again i mean i think the ball changed three times there within a uh, four three four yard period or yard area and looks like they are gonna take this one and uh and here we go pipe going for the uh the, i wouldn't be surprised now between well this is between him and nero uh they both have the ability for the the two-pointer. Where's that ball behind? I think, the... I think it's just there. Yeah, just behind. Oh. The angle we're looking at it. Um, it looks like it, but I'm sure that ball's just behind, just beyond. Behind the line. As Yale was saying, remember, it cannot be touching the line. And again, Juanmar. But Pipe, you know, he, he, he's been one of the ones who's been right there. You know, putting the uh, the pressure on. You oh, thought you might see a two pointer out of out of Pipe. Oh, he's gonna. I think he's gonna go for it he's, there. He's looking downfield, but you never know. They 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 use having the two pointer also also kind of throws the defense off a little bit. Are they going for the two pointer or are they gonna go short? Here comes Pipe, and he is gonna get underneath this one and look at this perfect pass. Yeah, out to Nero. Now Nero could. Oh, he didn't because Losa got there first. 
And he kind of overplayed, just kind of gave it up and said, let's go to the next one. Here comes Loza. Sandfest back on the move, bringing it into uh, Chavieso territory. Tomacho on the boards, teeing it up nicely. Picked up on the near side by Nero. <clears throat> Didn't get a clean first shot on that. Falabella sends it into the open space. Losa, big swing and a miss. And again, Nero. Now then, a lot of space on the left side here for Nero. Hammers that one over into that danger zone. Tomacho Pierres, uh, not quite getting the finish and the touch he wanted. And again, very good defense here by Senfest in the form of Pedro Falabella. Just stolen there off uh, Pipe Vecellina, but we will have a whistle. Now oh, earlier, man, Magoo and, and Facundo were off to the races. And uh, then the ball got turned back. And here's see what happens here. This ball's going down. I'm going to go drag it forward one time and then regroup. And right there, you got, got another little line change, quick line change. And uh, that'll go to our, our courtesy change here in the fifth with 311. And uh, we'll see where the umpires are uh, placing that or have that line going there. You had Pedro, uh, one, one Senfest player and one Treviso player come together <clears throat> inside the 60. We'll see which player they had on the right of way. Another shot here of Pedro Falabella. You wanted me to tell you that you were invited to the his asado if you wanted. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess they have. Okay, so we did have a a call, a foul, a right away violation, and uh, the Traviso team challenged it, and uh, they lost their challenge. Mm -hmm. The call stands. Okay. So at the moment. That will give uh, Senfest a, a little bit of an advantage here in the in the, uh, in the last uh, chucker and a half, as uh, the Senfest team still has their challenge. And like I said, that was another little quick line change again. So from the center, now Pedro. He has yes. the long ball. He's going to switch it back. It was, it was uh, Facundo Loza taking the penalties. Yep. So they definitely have switched it up. Let's see if they go to the short or they go for the long one. Bella Bella. Oh, he was trying to pass it over there to uh, the Preda. But Tomacho slightly topped that one. Calle back to uh, Pierres. Nicely done. Gets a little bit of gap or a bit of a space between the boards and the uh, the player. There's the backhand. Now here we go. Senfest. Uh, not a clean touch. Pierre is able to come back in time. Kaye will pick it up and turn it. He's got a player out on the left-hand side. There he is. He read it well. Timed it just beautifully as uh, Tomacho. Yeah, drags it out a little bit to the left. We'll try and cut in. And... Uh, a little bit of a mistake there, and again, a whistle. <clears throat> Look at this again. Tomacha takes it out to the left. You see, a little bit of a miss hit. In comes Falabella. A little contact there. Well, he takes to the inside, and then one player comes, comes in, and it looked like the ball got kicked back. So, inside whether that player's okay coming there or not. So... We'll discuss this one. Remember, Travieso does not have a challenge. So they will have to go with whatever the call is. If it's, uh, and, uh, but it might go the other way, this ball, because the ball did get kicked back. And it looked like Tomacho was in there. But we'll see what the two mount officials 
after they discuss this one and work it out, what they think. 2.23 here in the fifth. Nip and tuck. And just that yeah. one goal in it. Yeah, very evenly balanced. Oh, here we go. Even Steven. So, um, foul against the blue. And Tamacho Piedras was inside the 60. So, Bruce Corrard Matrix trying to save a penalty two, probably, on it. And they did challenge it. And they're going to lose their challenge. The call will stand. A uh, right away violation against the blue. And that puts us equal now. So both teams will go here, finish the rest of the game. And that's going to uh, put Pipe back on the line with a open goal, 40-yard penalty three. And Pipe at the moment is 100%. Two twos and one three. Well, to be expected, no mistake. And for the first time, Travieso have a little bit of a cushion, Dale. Nine goals to seven. Uh, was a, a tall order getting there because uh, Senfest have definitely not made it easy for them. Now, more pressure on the team in blue. As they go back to the halfway line, ball is thrown into play. They need to try and win every throw in now. And uh, I'm sure they could do with picking up a quick goal here before they go and change ponies for the sixth and final chucker. But uh, Juan Martinero, he's got other ideas. He wants to get his team into double figures as soon as he possibly can. That to the left-hand side. Vecellino, too late. Ball sent back, comes off the boards, picked up by Laprida. But Pepe Vecellino comes out on top and tees it up nicely here for Calle. Little near side backhand, Losa in a little fight, sword fight there with that Nero. This time Nero needs to uh, <clears throat> give him a little bit of space to make the play. Off the boards, Calle putting his mallet down. A yeah, lot of hard work. Both of these teams, yeah, now want to get possession somehow. It'll be left for Losa, who's on the boards. And there is the drive up to La Prida. But Pipe Vecellino, as you can see, went back. And the inside backhand from Tomacho Pierre is now. And who can turn on it first? You've got Calle and or Juan Martinero. He will pick it up or try to pick it up on the near side. Losa once again. And he will give it to uh, Magu. Magula Prida leaves it for Losa. Turn around by Falabella. Oof. Yeah, they're all, they're all uh, trapped in. Well, all eight ponies inside the 30 yard line there. You'll uh, you get a good look at them here. One, two, four, five, six, seven, anyways. Turned around here by Pedro. And looks like Tony yeah. comes in there and it meets, and then uh, so that will end the chucker here. And uh, so we'll see what the umpires decide when we return for our sixth and final chucker. But uh, well, here we go. Should be an exciting one. Stay with us. We'll be right back for our sixth and final chucker.
another great season. We had a blast this year, great fields again. They keep getting better and better, and we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here in Aspen, playing with these great people, amazing views every day. I mean, how could you ask for more? Best part about being out here in Aspen for the polo is the fields, the community, Melissa and Mark, the great competition, and, uh, and the amazing horses, and how the horses enjoy being out here. I love the town, I love the valley, I love also spending time here in Carbondale. Um, so I just love this place in general. I have a lot of friends, I've made lots of friends over the years. The Gansis has have created a spectacular place here. Uh, that has become a really important summer destination for polo in America. Aspen, I love it there. Our family's around, a ton of horses, a ton of golf, and a lot of fun polo. So. All right, everybody, well, uh, a lot going on there between the, uh, the fifth and sixth as everyone's lined up. Let's keep an eye on this. Let's check it out. We, uh, we had a lot of plays going on. Magoo. And no play there by Nero, so he just rides out. They leave it for Loza. And look at the back. You have Falabella. And there's the ride-off by Pipe. Clean. Then Pedro's going to spin around here. Keep an eye on number one in the white. As they come in there now. And then you have a whistle. So they, they went ahead and triggered that and decided on the trigger, we had one upper head, one way, one head, the other, which you can see why, with all that traffic and everything going on there, but they did send that in to check it out to see with the uh, IRO, uh, third man, and they did have a foul against the Travieso team. So we'll start out with the open goal right there for Loza. And well, here we go. One goal difference. This is going to be, uh, I told you, it's going to be exciting to uh, six yep. shark here. Now, that, and that's the first goal that the uh, Sunfrest team has scored here in the second half. So, they just get, get it going here. They've had opportunities, but uh, four goals scored by Travieso and all unanswered. Indeed, indeed. So, let's hope that uh, this is, uh, yeah. The start of many more goals to come here for both teams, of course. Uh, Tomacho Pierez will leave this one. Nero. <coughs> oh, well, that's what happens. You give that 10 goaler too much space. And uh, Juan Martin Nero picks up his second goal of the match. Here you see it again. Tomacho not quite getting uh, the touch he wanted. Nero right there. Hammers that one through. And yep. Nice neutral play there by Tomacho. Again, not just scoring goals. It's Tomacho at three on the day. He had, he had a hat trick in the fourth, but making a neutral play there and leaving the the, uh, the easy shot there for, for Nero inside the 30. One mark. On the ball again, out to the boards, looking for Tony. Kaye, picked up by Falabella. Hello, sir. I beg your pardon. Michel making his way out to... Uh, to the open space. There is a little snapshot, but Pipi Vecellino read it coming very well and does not waste any time sending it back down towards uh, Tomacho Pierez. Pierez with a couple of little taps. Still, Tomacho Losa coming in, challenges uh, the six goaler, and it's going to be picked up by Laprida, changing the direction over to Marshall. Can't pick it up. Nero can. Coming down the line, Tomacho Pierres and Magoo Laprida. As uh, well, that's when uh, Nero had it. You see here, Nero has it. And it comes yeah. together right there. Look at them riding each other off. Uh, Facundo and Walmart, and then Walmart got kind of spun around. Spun around, and two yeah. Players are coming, and and uh, so we'll see what they decide to talk about this one. Again, not an easy call here, is is uh, because you have the pack of players. 
and they're all riding each other off. So one player hold the other player in, you know, can be a number of different plays. Like you said, Walmart did have control and then he gets, he gets hooked and ridden off by, by Facundo at first. Two goal difference, uh, 506 on the clock. And it looks like uh, they're going to go ahead and go with the uh, 5A here for Trevieso. And Nero's going to go ahead and keep it on the ground. He's got Pipe on the far side versus Leon. So now then, in Senfest territory, we move again. And look at this, the rotation working so well under the neck. Wow, where did he come from? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he start the play? That was a set play, I'm sure, because yeah. after he gave that pass, he shot straight down to goal. Yeah. So Very that. fast, the black horse, because I don't know where, where Walmart came from. He was like, Pipe went to the far side, as you said. It must have been a set play. Yeah. Uh, now look at Palabella. He's going to go ahead and take this one out. Pedro with uh, Magoo in the rumble seat. La Prida. And La Prida has found Michal. Rob Michelle, oh, lucky. Oh, everybody overrides. Topped it, turned around. Look how quickly that pony turned. Now then, Nero, but he's gonna get stopped in his tracks there. We have a whistle after two or three players overriding it, surprised. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, someone went on outside the play. 4.06 on the clock, so you are close enough for the courtesy change. But they wouldn't have uh, taken the breakaway no. away from from uh, Juan Mar. So maybe something happened down. Let's see outside the play. Here's uh, Rob goes for the play right there. Then they come together right there, and that's where Juan Mar spins uh, around. So you could have something there with the two players. Yeah, with Tamacho and uh, Facundo. Uh, but you have a late whistle on the play. And uh, wow, that that I was that was gonna be fun watching Walmart go uh, go to goal on the black horse. <laughs> that mare got around quickly, and then he was off to the races. And just bad luck there for Walmart because if they uh, there wasn't a whistle on the play, he would have gotten that one more run, uh, and then he would have been able to change. So would have gave him an opportunity to go up by three, and uh, yeah, just breaks of the game. So. We'll see what they decided on the call, on the late late whistle. We'll see what, what direction they decide to go with. And still, right now, anybody's match still up in the air. Very much so. And he said uh, five five uh, five goals scored in the second half. Only one, they said Fez, as uh, they had the open goal penalty two. Uh, to have had opportunities, have had uh, knock-ins. Uh, three, four, uh, four goals on handicap, and uh, three quick goals scored in the first chucker by Travieso. Four to three after the first. Two open goal penalty twos, and one for the field. So Pipe picked up a hat trick in the first chucker. Then uh, two goals scored. That's when Senfes came alive. And two unanswered goals to make it six to three. And uh, St. Fest was on a roll. One more goal scored. And now you get the open goal here. You did have a right away violation there. Uh, and Facundo uh, Loza will pick up goal number five. And three for the penalty line, two for the field. So actually very good shooting by Loza from the uh, uh, penalty line. We went in halftime seven to five. And then that's when it was Travieso, eight to seven after the uh, fourth, nine to seven after the fifth, and here we are, uh, ten to nine. And uh, like I said, anybody's match, Rob. Little backhand shot. Nero saying that should have been mine. Losa saying no, it ain't. It's mine. There is uh, Nero with the backhand, but only as far as Kaye. Kaye taking the pace out of that play just the one goal in it and uh, you can see the blues very very strong here nero on the near side finds a little gap pipe going up trying to take a player or two with him 
Nero. Out to Kaye. He stops, looks, has his uh, ball taken off him straight away there by Falabella. Keep an eye on that uh, clock, which of course is ticking down on the boards. Falabella now. Can he get past Tomacho? And will he keep that ball inside the boards? Well, he does just that, but only just. Again, Marshall, Tomacho. Falabella, now then, can he go around the outside of Tomacho? Yes, oh, no, he can't. Tomacho will turn it around. A little flick of the wrist there on the near side. Well done. Still Tomacho behind him. Nero, Falabella, Losa. Everybody wanting a piece of it. Hard ride off there between Nero and Losa. Ball comes out. And it's going to be picked up by Juan Martin Nero. He wants to send it across to Calle. Read it well, intercepted. Here we go, Falabella. Can he open those shoulders and take a shot? He might just leave it for Losa. Losa takes it out to the left. Oops. I think they came together in a ride off. Two players came together. Yep. I think that Juanmar. It was pretty fast. So make sure Juanmar is okay. 141 on the clock. I'm sure if the bridal. They might have got hung up a little bit. And uh, looked like uh, Bella Bella going to goal there. Looked like Pedro, no? Pedro was actually turned on the near side. And. Uh, Kind of came together, and uh, yeah, it looked like this. So yeah, we'll make sure he's okay, and uh, so uh, stay with us. We're gonna go. We'll make sure we got an injury timeout. We're gonna go to a little break. Make sure uh, uh, Juan Martin is okay, and uh, we we'll get uh, everybody organized on their ponies, and uh, we'll be right back to finish uh, this fine this six chugger. Stay with us here on CTV Sports. All right, thank you everybody for your patience there, and everyone's okay. So make sure uh, one more team is okay. Is it that two players kind of spin around there? It looked like Fall Bell was going to goal, and they went to ride each other off. And uh, so uh, Walmart was okay, so it gave him the opportunity to uh, switch his mount there. And with 145 left and uh, one goal difference. I believe, was there a possession happening there? I wasn't sure there's a possession or not. They'll let the, uh, they'll check with their, the uh, IRO here, the Mount officials, make sure if there was a possession, then it'll be a fair play. If not, they'll bowl the ball in directly. So we'll see what our two Mount officials decide. And you can see right there the line. So they're inside the 60-yard line and um, right around the 40-yard line. So a bit of an advantage here for Senfest, looking for the equalizer and uh, a huge bowl. And if they go with a straight bowl, and I think they're going to um, see, yeah, looks like they are going to go with the straight bowling here. So this is a huge possession, Yan. Yeah. 
You want to get the ball here. A minute and 40 left on the clock. And it's picked up by Vecellino. And he will clear it upfield as far as he can. Good pass to Kaye. But Laprida will steal it back. Still Laprida leaves it behind for Losa. Back to Laprida. A shot up to the front. The Kaye. Ah, a bit hesitant there, wanting to clear it. He does clear it. And now then, Pipi Vecellino. Keep an eye on that clock. Vecellino sends it upfield. One mark. We'll pick this one up on the near side. Well done. He had to play that on the near side. In comes Falabella. Luckily for Nero, he's going to get another chance. Ball's left at his feet. Kaye right behind. Kaye will pick it up and drag it. Everybody now once again wanting a piece of it. Down to the last few seconds. Well, this is going to be very, very close indeed. And Nero. Nero could put the finishing touch here. Nero, can he get another piece? It's just going to go out to the left-hand side. How unlucky. Yeah, it's going to click down here, though. I think they're still going to get a knock-in. They get there quickly. That's what I'm saying. Loza, watch. He's going to get there. He still have time. Because they can go coast to coast in 10, 12 seconds. Oh, what a read here, though. A steal by Kaye, yeah. a backhander. Oh, and just an out deal just wider was it a penalty of the play. Let's see. I think they, now they did end it. So, uh, well, there you go. Uh, they uh, went right down to the end. And like we said, I was surprised they come out. Here's your final stats right here. Uh, biggest thing is the shots. Like you said, Trevier, so they had a lot of shots on goal. They definitely had that offensive attack working. But again, only a very close game, one goal difference. So, uh, well done. Yen, any final words you? Ready? I would just like to compliment both teams for giving us a thrilling uh, uh, game here of the Palm Beach Open, which is uh, very much in line with what the W Pillar is all about. So congratulations to Travieso, commiserations, but a great performance by Senfest. Uh, I'm sure we will see a lot more from both of these teams as this tournament uh, continues. All right, join us this afternoon for uh, continuing action in the World Pole League Palm Beach Open. Uh, for Yan and Frank, I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports. Why I say thank you for making us leaders in polo broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.